and welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy 3! As I said in the last part, I was going to go back to my airship and do some chores. I basically dropped off pretty much all the equipment back here. And I... I didn't really switch weapons or anything, I just dropped all the equipment. And I basically super geared up <laughs> on high potions. I got max high potions. A little more softs and stuff, too. I'm actually gonna get ten more uh, Maiden's Kisses, just in case. And here's the deal. I looked up more on this game. There's no Maiden's Kisses, whatever. Uh, I, I grinded a tiny bit. I got, like, two more levels. You need to be- uh, there's, like, a boss gauntlet, kind of, at the end of this, and you have to be, like, between 55 and 60. Preferably 60. <sighs> It's nuts. Like I said, the last boss is just, you need the stats. Uh, so, here's the deal. I'm basically going to go back in this episode and go down, down, down to the Forbidden World, the forbidden uh, place where I got the shurikens. I'm gonna go all the way back to the store, buy more shurikens, because shurikens. I, I think I'm gonna need more for this boss if we're not gonna super grind. And while I'm there, I'll level and I'll grind and heal myself. And then, next level, we'll go through the tower and finally go to the Dark World. So this is going to be a grinding episode. I'm actually going to turn down the audio a little and turn on- oops. Turn on super speed. And that will pretty much be this episode. So if you want to skip that, go ahead, because it's going to be boring. <laughs> It'll be grindy. <laughs> so yeah, here we go. Oops, I already went in the wrong door. Uh, for this episode, since it's a grindy episode, I can't really talk about much. I'm pretty much going to just... Uh, we're going to talk about the Breath of Fire series, just so there's something to talk about. Uh, all the way up to Dragon Quarter. I don't know much about the mobile game, which I think is Breath of Fire 5. Let's actually turn the desktop audio down a little more so you're not hearing the horrors. And now you're just going to listen to me talk. Hurrah. Uh, we're already super level till we get down there. Basically, Breath of Fire... <sighs> Breath of Fire was... an outstanding series of games. In my opinion. Uh, the first one on the Super Nintendo... Mm, they had Square Enix help them, I think, translate it. Story was super... Ooh, I already gained a level for 50. Story was already really basic. Uh... Playing it again, it's basically old-school fun JRPG. There's grinding, there's... I really like the battle system, it's still fun, it's just the same thing. Uh, you know, JRPG, grind times. Single target, just psh, 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 hit things. Ah, I love old JRPGs. But the first game, it's pretty boring. The story is basically, it's like light versus dark. What's interesting is they do a lot of backtracking and stuff, and you can go to different places, and it is fun. Uh, but I say if you want to start with the series, start there because it sets everything. There's towns that are reappear. Oh, wow. I think Umbri just killed a king behemoth. But yeah, there's towns that reappear characters and it sort of just sets the feel. And I like it. It's a colorful game. Just if you replay it, it's going to be a JRPG slugfest. There's nothing around it, but it's cool. Uh. First off, yeah, turn the dragons. There's secrets in the game, too. Finding all the dragon forms and all that. And it's just, it's a fun slug. I enjoy it. You, they also re-release it for the GBA, where I think on the GBA, they change, like, you gain more gold and EXP as you go through. And so, you know, a little faster, a little less grind. It's more fun. And I also, I think, improved the translation, because, whoo, it got a little weird with some of the items. But yeah, it's fun. Recommend it for the start of the Breath of Fire. Uh, all these games are pretty much JRPGs, and because you get the dragons. Ah, great, fun. <sighs> Went the wrong way. But yeah, um, first Breath of Fire, you know, set, it was interesting. It set the it set the pattern for the next games. The second one wasn't released here until the GBA, probably because it dealt very heavily with religion. Uh, Boop, boop, boop. There's, um, a p there's sort of, I'm not gonna ruin the plot, but there's a church in the game. 
that's kind of slanted towards evil, and it's set up to be very, very, very Christian, Roman Catholic-like. Like, you know, there's an altar, there's one priest, there's one god, and, you know, the, they have church in a place that looks very much like, you know, the Roman Catholic cathedrals and stuff. And I think, ooh, see, this is why I made this kiss. This is why uh, it probably wasn't released here. And if you get it on the GBA, which I only think it was released on the GBA, it's still very, there's a lot of, I guess, jingoism towards religion, which nah, kind of goes with Japanese culture because they're not really fond of the way our religions work where it's kind of like, we're going to send missionaries and convert you and... Churches have a bad habit of doing that. Ah, another frog thing, jeez. But yeah, second game... I've heard a very good description of the second Breath of Fire. Like I said, the first one is just a regular JRPG. There's nothing special about it. It's good. I like it. It's fun. It's not the best Super Nintendo RPG out there. But it's fun. Um... Whew. Second one takes pretty much all the good from the first game and all the bad from the first game and basically magnifies it. So you got the good with the bad. Uh, first of all, the translation is terrible. I, I think they fixed it okay in the GB game. But not as much as I'd like. Uh, it's it's pretty confusing, but there is a good story there. But just some of the items, you don't know. It's like, what is this for? What am I doing? But they did a decent job. And then there's, um... Oh, sorry, my headphones. There's, uh... <laughs> I'm stuttering a bunch today. A little tired. Lots of working out. Breath of Fire 2, though, definitely uh, sort of became a cult classic. It's a very, 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 very good game. Uh, it's just... When I say the bad with the good, I mean, well, there was, it's a JRPG, the, the encounter is ridiculous. The music actually went way down in quality. I have no idea why that happened. And it was just, there's some areas of the game where it's just a slog, especially the last dungeon. I actually, like this last, remember how I said, I like Final Fantasy III's last dungeon, even though this is pretty sloggy. <laughs> sloggy. Anyway, uh, but... No, I just don't have fun. It's just a grind, annoying fest with Breath of Fire 2. I'm like, I'm supposed to be praising these games, but like I said, good with the bad. Uh, like, it's okay. Breath of Fire 2, though, interesting plot. It's fun. But where ever, most people, oops, where most people remember is Breath of Fire 3. And Breath of Fire 3 is where it really took off went on the PlayStation. And, whew. Love the plot of that game. Love pretty much everything about that game. There's a very interesting master system where you use level up as currency, so... I always hated, uh... In RPGs, they couldn't really make a challenge because it was just sort of like, well, you know, I can just grind, and I love to grind. So it's just like, well, I'm just gonna grind, so, you know, and everything was really easy. And games, they have trouble dealing with that, especially the Final Fantasy games. They... Fix this by, like, for example, in Final Fantasy V, you were limited to job classes and stuff. Like, you don't have super powerful job classes right at the start. Same in this game. Breath of Fire 1, or 3, did this by, you basically, if you level up a ton, it's going to be really hard to get the master skills. Because there's really, really good skills that you can get. And you basically, it costs levels. Like, for example, you need five levels to learn this skill under this master. And it also it altered stat builds too because each master would do something to your stats. Like, you would not gain attack power and defense but your, you know, agility and intelligence and magic ability would go up which is nifty. I like that. So, the story of Breath of Fire 3, since I've played it too many times, I like it. It's almost like a cautionary open thing, and I like that. Because the, the other two games are sort of like good versus evil. And while there were multiple endings, yes, there are multiple endings to uh, Breath of Fire 2, Breath of Fire 3 is just sort of like, well, you know, this is a choice we have to make. And I like that sort of ambiguity. But then... So we have a good series. We got Breath of Fire 1, standard nice JRPG, good experience. You like that old school stuff. Two is good. A lot of good stuff about it. A lot of bad, but it's fun. 
and oh, I forgot to mention the shamans. You can combine shamans with characters and make different characters. So it was very interesting with new abilities to see what you could do and how many characters you can combine. By the way, I was hanging out in this hallway because you run into those, not these guys, the Hakors or whatever, those guys who cast thunder. They give you the most experience. Uh, and you run into the best enemies here. You don't run into the ninjas, you run into these dudes, and it's just better. Anyway, back to Breath of Fire 2. So yeah, one, okay, two. Recommend and play them. They're good old school RPGs. Little less recommended than, you know, the staples, you know, like the Final Fantasy. Here they are, these guys. The Final Fantasy series, and like Mario RPG, and Earthbound, and all that. And even like Lufia. It's it's just up there mid-range. But it's still just oh, great game. Sorry, I'm gushing. Mainly, why I'm doing this is because I wanted to rant about Final Fantasy, not Final Fantasy, sorry, Breath of Fire 4. Fourth in the series. Whew, how do I start this? It is an ambitious, amazing game. Uh, first of all, there's a lot of culture in it. They did a lot with Chinese culture instead of more just sort of general... RPG stuff. Uh, usually there'll be some Japanese stuff in a, a JRPG, but not a lot, you know. Some games have it a lot, but this one... Usually, like, look at this. Like, the Final Fantasy games, yeah, you know, there's, like, samurais and magic caching. Sometimes there's, like, oh, this guy's using, like, a spell card or something that is sort of, you know, in Japanese culture with their uh, fantasy stuff, but not really. So, this used a bunch of Chinese culture... Uh, Breath of Fire 4. There was... Where are my eye drops? They have a very interesting use of just, like, all of the the towns and sort of the culture and the feel and the architecture. Jeez, oh, I hate ninjas. <laughs> or, but all the towns and architecture and such are basically Chinese. And, like, there's a bunch of dragons in the game, like dragon gods, and they're all named... They all have, like, Chinese names. And... While it isn't just like, here's Chinese culture, because there's different, if you play the Breath of Fire games, there's a bunch of different clans. There's like the, I think the Warren clan, which are like cat people, and they're more sort of like Native American-ish, warlike, more simple people. I'm using qu air quotes right now, we're gonna heal here. Shoink. And you have like the Windians, which are just fantasy flying people that usually have a military or something, and then... You know, there's a bunch of different things like that. It's it's fantasy. But this thing, you know, there's good... This is this was really cool to do the Chinese thing. This is not something wrong with uh, Breath of Fire 4. I really, really like to see the different designs. What started happening with Breath of Fire 4, and I mentioned this with my Final Fantasy review, uh, Final Fantasy X, there's a lot... The story, first of all, is pretty freaking gripping. When I go back... I'm not going to spoil the story. It's just, there's a lot going on. Actually, yes. Spoiler warning. I am going to spoil some of this story. <laughs> in in the game, uh, there's there's a war going on, and they made a weapon, which kind of mirrors the n sort of nuclear weapon that we might have dropped on Japan, you know, twice. Uh, it's basically a giant cannon that sh shoots really, really, really long range, and it hits the area and corrupts it. And, you know, kills a bunch of people. And the corruption spawns monsters and basically comes like a cesspool of just nope. But the cannon, I call it, I forget what it's called. I, it has a name in the game, but I call it the depression cannon. Because it literally is a cannon that shoots depression. <laughs> um, what they do is they, to power the cannon, they do a ritual that takes someone from the area they want to shoot. Such as, you know, the queen of the area or like the guard, the main guard, or just someone with very big ties to the area. And they torture them horribly until they hate life. And they take all that hate that's related to the other place and they basically load it into a cannon of willpower death and shoot it. And like I said, it, it basically leaves just depression all over the place. The place is all messed up, you can't go there, it's basically depression fallout, and there, it spawns monsters. And this is what gets me with the story. The story is really mean. Remember how I said in the Final Fantasy, basically when I talk about Final Fantasy X, I didn't really like it that much because there was a lot of mean moments that were just in there and it didn't, they didn't really go anywhere. 
And it didn't, I don't want like a pure happy story of, yeah, we're going to defeat everyone. And I'm not talking about Final Fantasy X with the hopelessness given in the story about how, you know, there's always a monster there and, you know, life, life is always about to go and you got to love every day. No, I, there, there was a very good plot with that. How it was just like, bam. And some people, you know, fell a little hopeless. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about just the random bullies and mean stuff that were in there. I'm, you can listen to me talk about it in the other video, the other grind video, but <laughs> Breath of Fire 4 had it worse. Um, the story is just depressing. I remember... The first time I played it, I used to have really bad depression. Uh, not gonna get into that. This game didn't cause it, but I played it. I remember I rented it and I played it like I think I beat it in a week. I just played it, and I didn't. I got to the end and I didn't even beat it. I was just like, whatever. The game was just depressing. The story, everything just feels duller. The cities feel mean. There's a long sort of quest line slash character thing you have to deal with where you're dealing with this merchant and he's this shady old asshole. And he basically makes you do dirty work for him. He hits on Nina, the, the girl character, and, like, it's very odd and just creepy, and it happens way too much. And the whole- your journey through the game just feels gross. You just- you just feel like you're always just gotta, you know, do bad things or wiggle your way underground to get somewhere, and then there isn't even a, a payoff. It's just sort of like, well, there's all this shit going on, and it's not- like, and once again, I do not need a story that is pure happy of save the world, amazing stuff. But this game just had way too much under just depressing. Like I like I said, there's a freaking cannon that shoots depression. It, I'm not gonna spoil the end either, but it's not it's not good. Like I said, the end of Breath of Fire Three was open, but you at least did stuff, explored stuff. It, it didn't feel like the world was basically just going to go into a dystopia of like fuck you. <laughs> I'm sorry I cursed, but I had to there. Um, one of the funny... Just, I, I don't know, the game just seems really mean. And let's actually go to, you know, the actual gameplay then. The gameplay. It's very similar to Breath of 3. Breath of 3. Breath of Fire 3, speaking. And it's it's still fun. They added more. There's combos and all that. I, I didn't really... There's a... I didn't really like it as much as I did the others. It's still good, but it just, it feels, I don't know, it just feels off. Even when you do really big stuff, it's just like, mm. You know, with other games, like, it's like, oh, I got a ton of attack damage on, I don't know, it's just, it feels like they just sort of didn't try that hard, but it's still good, they still have the master system. Instead of levels up, now, some of them require levels, I think two do. But the rest, you have to do something in the game. Like, I think one of them is you have to complete, like, this trading quest and get go from, like, an, a lead ball to, like, a ball of pure gold or something. And another one, you have to get, like, a certain number of combos to, uh, for him to actually start teaching you stuff. And yeah, that's good. I like that. Uh, but I don't know. I didn't really enjoy the battles as much as I did. Breath of Fire 3 and all that. Maybe I'm just weird. I'm gonna go with I'm just weird. But, yeah, the story of that game, it's just... Whew, it kind of fell apart. I, I don't know. There's I, it's, it's a game that I don't like, but I can't explain why. <laughs> that's weird. That, you know, as I think about it, that's very odd. But, still, I recommend playing it because there's interest... Whoa. I didn't even know this was here. What? Dude, I found a secret path that's not on the map and it goes nowhere. Oh, whatever. Anyway, uh, so, yeah. I'd say if you only want, you know, we don't have time to play a ton of RPGs, and I understand that. Play 3. Just play Breath of Fire 3 if you want to get into the series. Uh, but for the rest of the games... Oh yeah, I'm leaving out. Remember how I said that... Breath of Fire 4 just kind of felt depressing, but, you know, there's still good stuff there. Pff, the next game, Breath of Fire Dragon Quarter, is super depressing. <laughs> it's like all the world is gone and you're just living underground and everything's just kind of dirty and... Underground, K, it's just not interesting. Uh, the game, if you ever played Breath of Fire Dragon Quarter, do not think of it as a Breath of Fire game or even anything like that with... 
JRPG. It's a very interesting game that they do a lot of fun stuff with. It's it's an RPG you have to replay over and over by design. Basically because you, you start off with a rank, and it's the lowest rank ever. And as you play the game and do stuff, you get more higher rank. And the ranks open up more doors and more pathways, and you can do stuff faster. Like, when you restart the game, the first dungeon is way, 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 way easier, because now you have all this stuff. It's sort of like new game plusing over and over and over and over and over again, if that makes any sense. Let me save the state here. I am just rambling at this point. I oh, just want to talk about the weirdness of, of Breath of Fire 4. Okay, plot spoilers. No, I'm not gonna, not gonna spoil any plots. Just... Breath of Fire 4, I don't know, there's just a very odd feeling about the game, where it's just like, eh. Uh, they also did something interesting. This isn't really a spoiler, because you find this out early. Uh, in every Breath of Fire game, you play as Ryu, and he's always the dragon guy who turns into dragons. Hurrah. And in this game, he's split into two parts. And you can tell there might have been some Final Fantasy VII anime... I guess, influence on this, because he's split into two guys. He's, the first one is just regular Ryu, the guy who doesn't talk to the innocent dude. You know, he just wants to be nice. He's, he's like this way in every single game. He's just... He's innocent, but he wants to be nice, and he he isn't just like, I'm a dragon, ah, F you. And... In this game, yeah, he's split. Basically, his... His innocent side and his side that has seen the world. And the world side just is like, whatever, I just want to be the Emperor God and come back. The guy who is the other, he's basically like a discount Sephiroth. He's moody, all that fun stuff, and they do actually a better job with him, though. Um, wait, hold on. I'm not saying Sephiroth is done badly. Sephiroth, I feel most of his good character uh, building was off screen, so to speak, if that makes sense. You don't really see his fall. You kind of do, but in the way the Sephiroth character was ha was handled in Breath of Fire 4, you see his fall way more. Uh, you basically see him go from being like, you know, whatever, humans are just beneath me, I'm just this powerful god, why should I, you know, and you see him just be like, you know, I just, just want to be super powerful, and you see him, you know, just become a little human and then he loses that, and he's just like, no, just... F you guys, you've messed it up. That's another sort of depression thing, too, because they start humanizing characters, and then the characters get the crap ripped out of them. It's sort of like... It's sort of like, okay, here's this character, and, you know, he's growing, he's learning, there's character development. Just pretend it's like a, a regular old JRPG, like, not chosen one character, but just like, ah... You know, I am the one, blah blah blah, I wanna get better and fight and save people. And even if they don't want to do that, even if they're just sort of like a mercenary or something, but they're still humanized. This game is just, is just sort of like... And now they have like seen all of their children die and tortured and their family and all of their friends have abandoned them and everyone's brainwashed and dead. And this doesn't happen in the game. I'm just giving... Like, the person is basically broken. And all they want to do now is just, is just either die and they don't care like about anything. That's how depressing Breath of Fire 4 is. It's weird. Ugh, creepy game. What else there's? Uh, but the series is good. Like I said, if you can only play one, play Breath of Fire 3. I'm going to the dragon systems with them too, because the dragon systems are cool. So in the first game, play Breath of Fire 3, Breath of Fire 1. Uh, the character Ryu, the dragon dude, he can- he'll visit temples throughout the game. Some of them are kind of hidden and you gotta go out of your way. And in the temples, he'll learn how to uh, turn a dragon, a dragon form. Ta-da! And he'll- he'll- he basically uses a turn to turn into the dragon and all of his stats go up. And he gets a new attack that basically hits really hard and usually hits the whole screen of enemies. Oops, I have been frogged. And... Oh, I've been deaded. Let's, uh, let's fix that. I, didn't even, I forgot frogs are really weak. Oh, I revived, and it's a frog again. Yeah, but the, you turn into a dragon and you use an attack, and you're permanently a dragon. And you can die and turn back into a human, but you have such amazing stats as a dragon, it's, you're really not gonna die. And you progressively 
get the, the master form, which turns everyone into a dragon that does max damage and has max HP and pretty much doesn't die. The dragon forms were a bit overpowered in the first game. You know, turn into a dragon, have a super attack, super stats, really can't die. They, they needed to the sort of down them. Uh, the, the game was still decently challenging, but once near the end, it just it was literally just damage, damage round, damage. Like, it wasn't even exciting especially the last boss battles of that game if you watch like hg bailey play that game it's just sort of like well i'm just gonna speed it up and use this and the you know there really isn't much strategy here you just attack with your super form over and over until they die and there's no strategy at all uh so yeah they were a little overpowered people could agree oops but then, uh, Breath of Fire 2, yeah, they, they nerfed the dragon form. Super nerfed. Uh, the dragon sort of became a summon instead of a transformation. You basically turned into a dragon for one turn. It used up all of your MP, but it did a ton of damage. And it was based on what your MP was, so it was frugal to save your MP. And Ryu, Ryu didn't get a lot of spells in that game, but still. It was sort of save this for the boss and just have Ryu be a regular warrior without many skills. So it was nerfed and it was very boring because, like I said, you only really used them in the boss fight. There wasn't like a- you didn't really want to use them anywhere else unless you were grinding and by a town. And there weren't really many, like, MP recovery items, so you couldn't really abuse it, you know, and just poof, use it over and over. And like I said, you needed high MP for it to actually do damage. So it was- it was pretty boring. Even the final form of that game was just the same thing. It was just the powerful summon MacGuffin kind of thing. Just boring. Uh, Breath of Fire 3 revolutionized, in my opinion, the dragon forms. Uh, first, you basically get genes. You get an ability called Ascension, the Terranu Dragon, and you pick genes, and depending, you can pick one to three genes, and depending on what you pick, turn to different things. For example, you could pick, uh, there was like elemental ones like fire, ice, and lightning, and those would add fire, ice, and lightning to your attack your, like, properties, so they could use, like, Thunder Claw, they could use Thunder Breath if they choose fire, Lightning, and you also got Defense and Weakness versus that element, so, like, a f if you turn to, if you use the Fire Gene, you would be stronger against Fire, but weaker against Ice Attacks, which was, you know, it was a nice balance, and you could balance it out, you could mix Fire and Ice, and you could get both those abilities, but yeah, there are, uh, Enhancement Genes, like, uh, so like Thorn and Gross, which just increased your stats and gave you new abilities, or Defender, which gave you like counter. And then there were genes that changed your form, such as Miracle, which changed you into a form that sucked up the whole group into this huge tanky dragon. And stuff like Warrior, which. Oops, what did I just do? <laughs> oh no. What did I just do? <laughs> okay, you're okay. Who got the super magic? You did. Swap with Umbri, please. Okay, I I'm sorry about that. But yeah, you and there like the warrior form. The warrior form, you had less defense, but you had tons of speed, and just could hit really hard. But you know, you had to be careful because you didn't want to destroy everything. So, or you didn't want to die. And then there were just special forms that you could find by mixing certain genes together. There were ultimate forms. And you got some of these through the story. Like, you s don't have them in the beginning, and through the story you'd get genes after certain story elements, or they were, like, required, and the rest were just sort of hidden around the world. That was cool. There were ultimate forms for each. There's basically the Welt form, which was just, you didn't have enough genes. You just, it was like one, you know, all it has is a fire gene, I can just turn into a fire Welt Prar. Um, then you had the dragon form, which was when you mixed three non-changing genes together, and that was just sort of the balance mixed of just, I, all my stats go up. It wasn't about attack or defense, and you had the, you know, the behemoth, the big mixed, uh, miracle gene that took everyone. Your attack went way down because, you know, there's only one party member. You still hit hard, but just one party member, and, but you're super defensive, so, good. And then the warrior, like I said, and there's the ultimate four of the time at, and each of the, of uh, time at and the kaiser, not, the, yeah. And each of these forms, as I said, had an ultimate form with it. Like the dragon, if you ch had the time at, time eight, not the time at, the trigun, which was basically the master of all the elements. The whelp had the wildfire, which was like a fast, super defense guy who had like a no HP. It was all like fun gimmicks that you could do. And then, 
just it was a great system. It was fun to experiment. You could save dragon forms you liked. You just oh, loved it. All the forms look cool. The cool spready cartoons. Very good job they did with this. What level are we on? Oh, just 53. But yeah, so. <laughs> Breath of Fire 4, once again. Breath of Fire 4 did not do good with the dragon forms. First of all, okay, anyone who's played any RPG, usually there's side quests and little mini games, especially things like the Final Fantasy games, where, if they haven't, like Final Fantasy 7, etc., there's little side things like the motorcycle game, the card games, and stuff like that. Fun times. Uh, imagine if a huge amount of the game was based around that. Like, you never could get any spells or anything or upgrade characters until you, like, mastered the motorcycle game or mastered the little side quest games. Yeah, that would be annoying. That's kind of what they did in Breath of Fire 4, and it's... Ooh, it is bad. Um... <laughs> There were tons of mini games in that game, like loading stuff onto a boat and a sand racing thing on this sand boat thing. I forget. All this crap. And the scores you got on that determined your dragon forms and how they leveled up. You got all the default dragon forms pretty much, but you needed to level up these silly side quest things in order to get, you know, the good forms. And it was just, it was tedious. Also, the forms, there was no genes. You just got a form during the story, and they could use skills. They also looked way different. Uh, all the dragons up to this point were sort of the traditional rar wings, big old dude, breathe fire. The warrior dragon was sort of just like a dragon furry, like a dragon humanoid guy. But all the dragons looked pretty fun. Awesome. This is a fun, fun, uh, Breath of Fire 4, they were a little different. They were, uh... I don't know why they, like, the holy dragons that you run into, not really any of them look like dragons. They're more just sort of elemental gods that are nifty. I'm gonna buy some shurikens, like I said. Switch up on the shurikens. And, like, one of them is a great flying sky whale. I don't really consider that a dragon. Uh, one of them was, like, this caterpillar dragony thing. Okay, 32, that's enough interesting. One of them was like a big mud worm that you could see its skeleton through. Uh, they weren't really dragons. They were more just sort of elemental forces that took the form of what was around them. Um, so it was very odd. And your dragon forms basically looked like... Uh, they were very thin. They were just completely different. They were very thin. They had, uh, they had like dragonfly wings. They are interesting, but it was just very odd odd departure from this series, in my opinion. Will you die? Thank you. I think that, and just because the way you get them in, was so annoying, like I said, with the, the leveling up of the the side quest, you're just, oh no. But, I've been grinding for almost 30 minutes. More. 35 minutes. So yeah. The dragon, uh, as far as I know, in Dragon Quarter, remember how I said you basically restart it, restart it. Your dragon powers are the timer for that restart. The more you use your dragon powers, the more you become... Th there's basically this timer, and when the timer runs out, the game's over because you basically die. And using your dragon powers increases, this, like, it lowers that. Like, it, once it gets up to 100%, the game's over, and using your dragon moves, yeah. Dragon moves are really, really good, though. Like, if you need to get past a hard spot, you could activate them and completely blast everything away. Hurrah. We're gonna go back out. But, uh, yeah. So, I'd really like a game again with the genes. Even a choice. Like, for example, you could get all the genes in the Breath of Fire 3 game. It'd be really cool to see a Breath of Fire game where you had a choice. Like, you, you, maybe even for the elemental ones. Like, you go and there's, like, a fire or a lava. And, like, the fire is more offensive and gives you offensive abilities, but the lava is more defensive and magic-ish. And, or there's something like, alright, we found a shield, but it can either be, like, the essence of, like, a spike shield or, like, a big tower shield gene. So, just choices. And then that would add to replayability. Very much add to replayability. I don't think we're gonna see another Breath of Fire game again. 
Also, it'd be cool, instead of all the annoying little side quests where you have to button mash and time stuff, make something more real time with uh, fighting. Uh, where you're a dragon and you run around and fight stuff God of Warish style, sort of. Uh, that would be interesting. I don't know. Breath of Fire, man, I miss you. But yeah. Just good series, good series games. I've been ranting. I literally have just been ranting, and I apologize. It is just. The grind game. This this move is gonna be extra long because I just grind forever. Like I said, I need to be at least level fifty five sixty. Oh, this is not gonna happen. I'll probably grind off screen. So this is pretty much all I'm going to do. Hurrah! It's almost exciting. And we'll come back and do the castle or the the tower and go to the dark world. Because there is not much else to this game but that. And like I said, you need the levels. Even though I grinded pretty well and kept up, especially at that Bahamut, at his cave, I kept up pretty well. You still need more levels! This is ridiculous, this game. So yeah. This has been the exciting... <laughs> the exciting thing as uh, Akira Dom rants and rants and rants about Breath of Fire incoherently and levels up. That's pretty much it. I'll see you next time when I've leveled up even more. And we'll take that tower. Actually, screw that of leveling up more. I'm just gonna go now and see what happens. Like, in the next video. Not now, now. But we'll see what happens. But yeah. Thanks for watching. Bye bye